I just want to say whoever made the decision to have a hammer weapon in this game is fucking awesome and deserves a medal. Hey everyone, your friendly fast talking Charleston is here to bring you an interesting Monster Control World video in which I will talk about the hammer weapon. As promised, I'm trying to bring a bit of an expansion to the channel and since I'm enjoying Monster Control World a lot on my PS4 Pro, I decided to do this video, which will hopefully help a lot of you. Think of it as a back to basics in Monster Control World for the experienced people or the ones who bought it but stopped playing and are going to play it once again for Iceborne. It will be especially beneficial for the lazy fucks from Dauntless like myself who will give Monster Hunter a go and start preparing for the upcoming expansion. For everyone new to my channel, welcome to my epic world of music and gaming. Be sure to check the link to my Twitch where I do playing with viewer streams on a variety of games as well as live composing of Trevor music and video game soundtracks. As the god of thunder that everyone thinks I am, I decided to progress with the hammer in Monster Hunter World. Yes! That was exactly how I felt when I started playing the hammer and I must be honest as a dauntless player I totally enjoyed getting my ass looped by monsters with the hammer because in those small moments where I actually managed to smash their heads and pummel them to death it felt extremely satisfying. So the hammer is really nice and easy weapon to get the hang of in the game. It does not have a lot of complex combos and mechanics. A big warning, just like in Dauntless, the hammer here is not able to cut tails. And tails in most Hunter World play a lot larger role than in Dauntless for drops and crafting, so bear that in mind. What you can do, however, is cause serious headaches and damage to every monster in the game, and it feels very satisfying. You can also break parts very fast, deal tons of knockout damage and have a lot of fun while doing it. The main advantages of the hammer are very high raw attack power, you can run with it even if the weapon is unsheathed, it has very strong charge attacks and you can also stun monsters a lot faster, you have simple combos and mechanics. And uh, some of the disadvantages are that you're playing a slow and heavy weapon, you will most likely focus the monster head which is dangerous and will require more practice and patience, the weapon does not have a very long reach so you will always be close and personal and finally its elemental damage and sharpness are low so you will need to often sharpen your weapon during the fights. So for everyone coming from Dauntless, in Monster Hunter World you have certain status effects similar to elemental damage in Dauntless or stagger damage and wound damage. Whenever you use a weapon with impact damage or a blunt weapon and hit a monster's head you deal knockout damage. When you reach a certain threshold you will knock the monster out or stun it which is the precise game term. It is similar to staggering a behemoth in Dauntless. Knocking out a monster will let you deal a lot of damage to it while being relatively safe and not need to worry about taking damage yourself. The main difference here is that knockout damage in Monster Hunter world can only be done to the head and not to the legs so you need to focus on attacking that. Excluding Zorak Magdaros, every other monster in the game can be stunned slash knocked out. Some are resistant to it, others are more susceptible but with the hammer you can still stun all of them with a lot more ease compared to other weapons. Be sure to check where each monster has a weakness for the different weapon types. The hammer deals blunt damage and usually the head is the best spot to focus with it. Other spots might take less damage. As mentioned earlier, the head is not the best place or the best spot to focus and to stay in. Uh, but uh, what should I say? It's not the safest but definitely worth it in the long run and will make you get proper experience and get good with the weapon a lot faster. Let us talk about the hammer combos now and the mechanics. I kind of have a habit of giving different names to combos and such things but uh, yeah, for the first one I call it the strike combo. It is a simple triple main attack button depending on your console or PC. I play on PC and PS4 Pro but for these videos I will use the PS4 button since I'm recording on it. You can do the combo in three different ways, stationary, moving and with your weapons sheeted. When doing the first two variations you can always empower or charge your hammer before you attack. Charging the hammer is done by holding R2 and pressing the circle quickly. The type of charge will give you an increase to damage and stun power and will last indefinitely until you either sheet the hammer or you get hit by an attack which can stagger you. Charging your hammer is very important and I would advise you to always keep it charged and buffed. Back on the combo, depending on whether you're moving or stationary you will have two different initial hits. When stationary the hit will deal more damage and be slower while moving you do a side hit which is faster but deals almost half the damage. I advise you to use both depending on the situation, also you can use X to break out of the combo at any time and evade incoming attacks from monsters so remember that. The third type of the combo can only be started when your weapon is sheeted, although you cannot empower the hammer that way the combo will still deal a lot of damage. It will do two swings and then follow up with the stationary combo of the variation that we we talked about. Next is the big bang combo which is also pretty simple to execute and deals your biggest damage numbers and it's your biggest damage dealing combo for the hammer. There is a catch however. The whole combo is 5 presses of the circle button or the equivalent on your PC and Xbox and will deal a total of 7 hits. In order for the combo to be fully completed the first 4 hits must make contact with the monster. Even if one misses the combo will end, missing on a lot of damage. 
It requires good openings of the monster to be executed, but compensates with the amount of damage you do. You can transition from your strike combo into the big bank one by pressing the triangle after either one of the two sheeted attacks or after the moving first attack of the strike combo. Next we have your charge attack combos. Holding out R2 or the respective button on PC and Xbox will cause you to charge your hammer. You can do this while running but it will drain your stamina. There are three charge levels and each one will initiate a different attack if you release your charge. Level 1 will do a charge side attack, level 2 will do a charge upswing attack, level 3 will do a charge big bang attack. If you have your hammer quick charged which is R2 plus circle combination then you will do a more powerful big bang attack combo which is amongst the most damage dealing ones in your arsenal. With a level 3 charge you can also do another combo which is done if you release the charge while moving. The attack is called spinning bludgeon and will do 5 hammer swings. You can kind of move and control the attack but only a bit. You cannot evade while doing this attack so you have to be very careful when to execute it. You can also press triangle during different swings of the attack to do a finishing move. After the first spin you will do a spinning side smash. After the second and third spin you will do a spinning follow up. After the fourth or fifth spin you will do a spinning strong upswing. Finally we have the sliding and jumping attacks of the hammer. While sliding you can press triangle and do a charge hammer strike attack. While sliding you can also hold down R2, charge your hammer and release it to do an aerial spinning bludgeon attack. If you jump from an edge and press triangle you will do a simple air attack. If you hold R2 while you jump you will do a charge attack. If you have enough falling distance you can do a level 3 charge attack. You can do these two attacks when you run up surfaces which allow you well to running up on them. You can also charge your hammer before running up the surface to do an aerial spinning bludgeon attack. These are all of your possible attacks. Now there are combinations and transitions from one combo to into another. I'm still learning those and trying to see which ones work best for me. I will make a second video regarding this once Iceborne comes out since there will be some extra combos and attacks we can add from there. This was everything for this one. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to give it a like or a dislike as you see fit. Don't forget to also drop a comment down below with feedback or suggestion for future videos. Remember to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon in order to get notifications if you want to see more content like this. This is everything for me for this video. See you in the next one. Shadow Strider out.